part three of Teach Like a Pirate goes over bu building a better pirate. The awkward question, do you want to be great? A quote that says, do you want to be safe and good or do you want to take a chance and be great? So our greatness only enhances the opportunities and possibilities for others. By being great, you are raising the bar and providing a model for others to emulate. Being truly great requires a significant amount of extra time and effort. It demands a relentless pursuit of excellence, self-improvement, and a never-ending commitment to grow and stay on the cutting edge. So who benefits from your greatness? Your students, your school, and your community all benefit from it. And ultimately, the world becomes a better place because of your greatness. Mediocrity doesn't motivate. Mediocrity is incapable of motivating and among the general public, there is a misconception that education is completely broken and teaching has become a lost art. Those who hold this misconception are wrong. We must be ready to take on the challenge of redefining greatness for a whole new generation of teachers and students. Our mighty purpose. Keep away from people who belittle your ambitions. Small people always do that, but the really great can make you feel that you, too, can become great. Our purpose is too mighty to be dragged down by negativity. Your purpose as a teacher has to be recognized by yourself, so stop looking for external validation. We aren't just teaching facts to memorize or skills to learn. We're uplifting lives and helping students fulfill their human potential. We're shaping the mothers, fathers, world leaders, entrepreneurs, and artists of tomorrow. It is a mighty purpose indeed. So where do we start? Everyone who got to where they are had to begin where they were. Where and when should you start applying all of this? Starting may well be one of the most difficult and underappreciated skills of all. You will find that taking the first step is very often the hardest part of the journey. So who holds us or what holds us back and what keeps us from starting? The next five points are the most common reasons or excuses and they're all conquerable. First is the fear of failure. Some people don't start what they know is in their best interest and what they really deep down want to do because they think their efforts will be wasted in failure. Life isn't 100% or fail. Our culture lives by the philosophy that you either win it all or you, or you are a failure. Striving for excellence and full engagement is about getting better. It's about adapting, adjusting, and trying to tweak and improve everything you do. And it's not about beating yourself up if you do, don't attain some unreachable level of perfection. Second is believing you, have, believing you have to figure it all out before you begin. Nobody has it figured out, and to win in the classroom, you must develop the ability to take leaps of faith. Unless you are constantly climbing and striving to move forward, you are sliding backwards. Third is perfectionism. Perfectionism can paralyze. It is an impossible goal, and it is far more important to be prolific than it is to be perfect. Fourth is lack of focus. It's easy to say no when you have a bigger yes burning inside. So you need to realize that every time you say yes to something, you are saying no to something else. So learn to say yes to the significant and no to the projects and activities that diminish the time and energy you need to fulfill your major purpose. And lastly, the fear of criticism or ridicule. We constantly are desperate and crave the approval and permission of other adults and will use the lack of it to justify inaction. Criticism and ridicule come with the territory if you are going to try new ideas and be proactive rather than reactive. So don't let critics steal your soul. After all, creativity is one of the highest forms of thinking. But some educational reformers don't want students to have an opportunity to, opportunity to express it. You will be criticized. And in fact, the more you step outside the box and reject the culture of conformity, the more of a target you will become. When criticism comes, take a moment to evaluate it and ask yourself it, if it is um, criticism that you can take for growth. If so, learn from that instruction. And when in doubt, take action. Thinking will not overcome fear, but action will. The best way to overcome fear is to take action, and the more action you take and the quicker you take it, it is the better it will be. Fear and lack of confidence can make what should be a simple and quick turn into a torturous and drawn out process. Whatever you can do or dream you can, begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Finding a crew. I thought those are, this was a really good quote that says, I not only use all the brains that I have, but all the brains that I can borrow. 
and that's from Woodrow Wilson. One of the most rewarding parts of teaching is the personal and professional relationships we develop on our voyage, and having a diverse group is our best interest. Collaboration versus collaboration. There's a lot of power in collaboration, but the final goal of such work should not come to a single right way of teaching. Collaborative environments can challenge your thinking and push you to places you might not have reached without the support of your peers. Therefore, increasing communication, thoughtful conversation, and opportunities for educators to interact and collaborate should be a major goal at your school. And lastly, classroom kung fu. An actual combat situation is messy and unpredictable, and as we know, classrooms are the same way. Great teaching gets messy sometimes and we have to constantly be aware of the changing landscape in our rooms and make moves based on what works and not what is necessary, theoretically ideal or scripted. Teaching, just like a fight, cannot be scripted. And we want our students who can take what they have learned and intelligently apply it to the real world around them.